Hello everyone. While India is slowly making its place among the biggest aviation markets globally, there's one company in India that has created a niche for itself as a premium airliner and it is Vistara. Today I have with me Mr. Vinod Kanan who is the chief commercial officer at Vistara. Mr. Kanan, welcome to News 18. Thank you so much Arjit for having me. Now I'll start by asking you how hard has been uh, COVID-19 for the aviation industry and more specifically from Vistara's point of view. Well it's been a tough time for most of hospitality and service industry as I'm sure you're aware. Right. Uh, aviation unfortunately was one of those which was hit the hardest I would say. Um uh, I think uh, given the situation we were in starting from say April or May last year uh there was of course a gradual recovery uh demand started coming back and i think as the numbers were reducing uh, we started to see a, uh, some glimmer of hope um uh, and we expected that this summer would be uh, even if not back to normal but at least much better than what we had uh, what we've been experiencing over the last 12 months or so unfortunately that was not to be uh, with the second wave as we are all aware uh, so it has uh, become uh, um, it has been quite a tough situation for all airlines including vistara and we hope that we are in a position where in the next few months we are back to the levels we were pre covid How is Vistara changing the ex- aviation experience in India in terms of Wi-Fi, retro livery, food quality, and other aspects? I think even prior to COVID, we were uh, there were a lot of measures that uh, that we had put in place and focused a lot on customer experience on right. the ground and on board. So uh, we we had a number of measures. We had great food, uh, which was well regarded by various customers. Uh, we had also made sure that, like you said, we had a, a full gamut of services on our right. new aircraft that coming in. so we have the wifi we have the streaming service we have the uh, seat back uh, uh, devices that are also available on the 787 and 321s and at the same time uh, we have also kept customers comfort in mind so on the newer aircraft in fact now we have almost uh, 10 to 12 of them you would see that there are slight i mean there are important but very critical uh, you know um, features such as a usb charging on on every right. seat because these days uh, without a phone or a mobile device you don't step out of the house or, or right. less so on an aircraft uh we also have a holder for people to be able to put their devices to watch their ott content so these are all things that we had kept in mind even prior uh, when we were coming up with the new aircraft deliveries and talking about the newer aircraft which uh, you just mentioned can you tell us about the fleet of vistara mainly uh, the 787-9 and the a321 neos that you have recently added in the fleet? so at this point in time we our fleet consists of 47 aircraft as okay. we speak today and out of the 47 we have two 787s the 787-9 okay. are dreamliners uh, right. these are the aircraft that can fly longer distance therefore mm-hmm. we are using it to operate uh, uh, from delhi to london frankfurt and soon in a in a couple of weeks we will launch tokyo as well right. um, the other aircraft that you spoke about is the 321 the 321 uh, which is which is a narrow body aircraft meaning mm-hmm. as we call it a single aisle aircraft uh, but still has a longer uh, uh, i mean more space as well as a longer mission length so therefore uh, we've been using that on a few charters uh, to to hong kong for example we've been uh, also been operating and we hope to operate it to places like uh, singapore or to dubai and such regional destinations within say 3 to 7 hours and in that range Uh, in lockdown you started various international flights earlier it used to be only domestic operations uh, what's your future plans for uh, international routes and do they limit uh, to the air bubble agreements only or are you planning to launch scheduled commercial uh, routes as well actually arjit we do plan to have scheduled international operations to most of the places we are already flying with the bubble right. uh, if you look at it i think uh, in in the future given although we hopefully come out of this pandemic soon Uh, okay. there will still be a mindset for people i suppose to travel direct uh, rather than stopping through intermediate points or take multiple flights because ultimately uh, the the exposure as well as the potential uh, you know chances of getting stuck in a third country is definitely not something that is uh, not have gone away from people's mind so therefore in that regard i believe that we have a lot of opportunity i believe we have a lot of uh, uh, market that we will be able to capture so therefore our intention is to continue operations on most of the international flights that we are currently operating right. uh, definitely on the long haul i think uh, london frankfurt as well as uh, tokyo as i mentioned uh, we do look at it from a, a medium to long term perspective it's not okay. just with the bubble again Uh, but we hope that that will continue and we will be able to increase services as well because right now we are just operating a few times a week 
hopefully we can do daily and more operations thank you for talking to me as a team thank you arjun thanks a lot